Yes, this is Dr. Ty Dixon, and I just want you to get ready for another powerful message entitled, Chosen by God, Are You a Disciple? Yes, we're going to explore some of the lives of some of the early disciples, and, and we're going to dive into their uh, dynamics, their character traits, their strengths, their weaknesses, because the power of God is available to transform us all into men and women with power, with authority, with commitment. Oh my God. We're going to find that the early disciples were human. They were ordinary people like you and I. But once they encountered Jesus Christ and once they gave him 100% commitment and he was, they were endowed by the Holy Spirit with power to carry out the work of ministry, as God would help them to do it. My Lord, once they got into that lane, their lives were never the same, nor were the people they encountered ever the same. So I believe that this message is going to encourage all of us. We're going to see a little Peter in all of us, a, a little John in all of us. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, some Matthew may be there. And Lord have mercy if Judas, Judas pop up. But the Bible says that the word of God was given to us as an example. The word of God was given to us for our instruction. The word of God is our guidepost, my Lord. That if I can understand what God did in and through other broken vessels, surely he could do it to me. And if I could just take heed at some of the mistakes that were made and not be a what? Repeat offender in the same area, then surely I've learned or gleaned from their walk. Get your pen, get your paper, get your Bible. Don't forget that Bible, please. Get your iPhone, your iPad. Oh Lord, your life will never be the same. Let's take a journey. Chosen by God. Are you a disciple? You know, the Bible tells us that God's thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not like ours, right? Some of the people that we would say, oh, that's the one, that's that's the one, that's the next apostle, that's the next disciple, that's the next evangelist, that's the next pastor. Oh, surely that is the next teacher. Oh, no, that's the next prophet. God says, no, (laughs) my thoughts are not like yours. My ways are not like yours. Let's, let's, and I want you to follow me. I hope you got your Bible. Please don't forget your Bible, your iPads, your iPads, your paper Bible. (laughs) But you can actually turn the page. (laughs) My Lord. Anyway, let's look at real quickly together. Isaiah 55, verse 8 through 9. Isaiah 55, verse 8 through 9. And I'm reading from the Christian Standard Version, the Christian Standard Bible, okay? Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. Are you still with me? It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my ways. This is the Lord's declaration. How my God. For as heaven is higher than earth. Look at somebody say, heaven is higher than earth. So my ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. Very, very insightful, profound scripture. And if we will write it on the tables of our hearts even when making decisions, even when our discussions, even when, God forbid, you have like a measuring stick against somebody and you deem them qualified or unqualified for the work of ministry to be an instrument that God could use. May we all gather our thoughts, sit down, and chew on. For as heaven is higher than earth so are my ways 
higher than yours. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. A declaration from God. We find that as we explore the lives of the early disciples, we find 50, Isaiah 55, 89 to be true to life on planet Earth 2022. So we're going to dig in, we're going to move on, and we're going to call out some of the things and note some of the things that's going to be beneficial in our walk in Christ. Let's start this series out with a definition. Now let's lay the foundation. Let's put another slab on top of the foundation that God is all-knowing, God is all-powerful, and God is greater than we are. Much, much greater beyond our comprehension. But let's start with a definition. Chosen. Write it down. Chosen. What's the definition of chosen? One who is the object of choice or of divine favor. The the one that was the object of the choice or the divine favor. An elect person. Selected or marked for favor or special privileges. Selected from several. The Bible says what many are called, but few are chosen by God. Skip down a little bit. What is a disciple? Write it down. Disciple. A disciple is a personal follower of Jesus doing his life and beyond that, right? So, so a disciple, he had many disciples, not just 12. He had many disciples, both men and women who followed him. And he has many now who is following Christ. Uh-huh. It's a follower, a follower, a disciple, it's a follower or a student of a teacher, leader, or philosopher. And we realize that Jesus Christ, my Lord, the Lamb of God, the Good Shepherd, like I said, he has many disciples now. And guess what? They're all human beings, just ordinary people. Serving an extraordinary God. Students sitting at the feet of Jesus. And you say, Dr. Ty, well, wait a minute now. Jesus is not here in the physical form, so how can I sit at his feet? You sit at his feet as you hear his word. You sit at his feet as you, as you, as you allow his presence to dwell on the inside of you. You sit at his feet as the Holy Spirit ministers to you and illuminates the word of God and you go, wow, I haven't seen that before. You're sitting at his feet. You are still being taught of God. So, like I say, the disciples and you, you are an ordinary person. But you are experiencing or encountering an extraordinary God by way of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. You see, the early disciples were, you know, they worked as fishermen and tax collectors and even had a revolutionary leader there. Uh huh. They experienced many hardships, failures, and doubts while following Christ. So, what I'm saying is, and, and I want to level the playing field in that on your journey with Christ, you're going to experience hardships. You will experience failures. You will experience sometimes you feel like a nut and sometimes you don't moments. You will experience all these things. But Christ has made you a promise, has made me a promise. I will never leave you. I will never stay, uh, forsake you. And as long as you stay connected to me, I will continue the good work mm -hmm. that I started. Somebody say he's got a good work that he has started in my life. Look at another person and say Christ has a good work 
that he has started in my life. Oh yes, yes, he's working on you right now, working on you right now. So let's look at Peter. <laughs> you know, most people have heard of Peter, impetuous Peter, etc., etc. But let's let's look at Peter and see if we can relate to Peter. <laughs> Peter is characterized as a strong-willed and courageous man. Mm -hmm. However, at times he could be quick to speak, impulsive, impetuous. He he can embody strength in one day and weakness and before the night was out my lord he he held firm to the teachings of jesus christ he was a believer of jesus christ held firm to the teaching amen but then there were times when peter lost it and don't be hard on peter because you we lose it sometime too right sometimes we 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 right on it revelation Thou the Christ, <laughs> thou art the anointed one, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. I know my God. And then a test or a temptation comes your way, comes my way, comes our way. <laughs> and we begin to wonder, are you truly who I think you are? Or do I know you in a way that's not really you. So we find that historical evidence points to the fact that during the time of Nero, Peter was crucified upside down. Crucifixion was a general means of death for Christians during the Roman Empire. And when condemned to death, Peter requested to be crucified upside down because he did not feel worthy to perish in the same way as Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? Someone zealous, believing in the power of God, got revelation knowledge, was willing to try to walk on the water. He did walk on the water. Got a little bit distracted, but he called, he came to Jesus and said, Lord, save me. He reached out and the Lord saved him. Peter had a way of rebounding from horrible, horrible mistakes. When Jesus told him that he was going to go to the cross, that he was going to give his life, Peter rebuked Jesus. Can you imagine? He rebuked Jesus. He rebuked his teacher. My God. He said, no, no. Jesus called it out. Get behind me, Satan. Peter held on. But Peter did not know as in Many of, of us do not know when that fiery trial comes that causes us to deny the faith. But see, what, 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 what deny that we know Christ, de de deny that we have an intimate relationship with Him. Maybe that denial may come through a job offer, maybe that denial may come through being, being with. Uh, 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 friends or, or being in the midst of a sorority or fraternity. Maybe that denial may come because of a family member. Maybe that denial may come at most inopportune moment. 